Good afternoon, everyone. It is 4 p.m. on the dot. Uh, we've set up a little little makeshift kitchen here in our restaurant, Sun Young Guys at Sunshine Beach. Uh, and what this afternoon is all about, it's really just to, to have a bit of a chat about all things Queensland, produce in particular. Um, obviously, there's the, uh, the flagship ones. We're, we're renowned for the pineapples, the bananas, uh, the macadamias, uh, obviously local ginger, which is something we use a truckload of in the restaurant. Uh, we're now coming into amazing citrus seasons, so things like mandarin oranges are, are phenomenal. Um, avocados have been red hot at the moment. Um, what I'm going to do for you today, though, is just I've, I've selected. I'm going to say probably my one of my one of my favourite dishes off the Some Young Guys menu. Um, I'm going with the Spanish crab fried rice. So I don't know if I lean towards this dish uh, because I've had the experience out there on the boat with the guys. Um, but I did find out I'm, I'm no sailor, I'm no fisherman, but it was a, it was a phenomenal experience to, to get out there, to meet Les and Lynn, um, who are the, the founders of, of Fraser Isle Spanner Crab, which has become a really a, a global brand um, and something that we have in our backyard 40 minutes down the road. Um, so, so to meet the guys that, that built uh, this company, that have, that have sourced this produce, um, and now let it loose around the world it was amazing. Um, it gave me the utmost respect for it, for the guys that are spending ungodly hours out there on the ocean, um, you know, getting such a phenomenal product. Um, that's why I've decided to go with this dish. I think it's a nice little tribute. It's right in my backyard. Um, so it's banana crab fried rice, okay? Obviously using some local uh, garlic and ginger um, and a couple of other you know, little things that we use a lot of in the restaurant, coriander, using both the stem and the leaf. Um, you guys have heard all this chat, chit chat before about using everything, the spring onion, the top and the bottom. Some beautiful uh, local free range egg, eggs from Estelle uh, out in Mergen. Uh, she comes and delivers to us a couple of times a week. So I'm going to run you guys through it. The, the one little thing that we do is slightly different, which we feel here really, I guess, lifts the dish and, and gives it that, that beautiful uh, comfort feeling about it, is we actually cook off the fried rice in rendered chicken fat, okay? So we've, we've got some amazing relationships with our suppliers. Uh, our but butcher in particular, we had a really great conversation with him about um, you know different ways to use the chicken fat, and we found it paired so well with the crab. Um, you've just got that sort of really beautiful, uh, luxurious flavour and texture that comes from the fat, uh, and it's a really nice way just to, to bring the dish together, and it puts our little spin on it, okay? So, uh, very simple ingredients, something that's approachable for you guys to, to have a go at home, uh, and simple seasonings. So we've got uh, just some sea salt, a little bit of caster sugar, and a little bit of white pepper, okay? So I'm gonna get going on the fried rice. Um, all right, so we wanna get the pan around a medium to high heat. Uh, I'm gonna go in first with a little bit of the chicken fat followed by the eggs. So once we get the eggs in there, get a little bit of a scramble happening. And then it's it's a really sort of quick fire process from there. Um, this is why we've got everything laid out. So the recipe has been put up, has been shared with you guys to be able to put everything together. Uh, if you wanted to go with a vegetarian option, I think for me, one of my absolute go-tos with a vegetarian uh, dish, a vegetarian rice dish in particular, would be would be a nazi. So basically like an, an Indonesian style fried rice, very, very similar process, kicking off with some onion, ginger, garlic, throw some fresh turmeric in there, which is uh, also something that we use quite a lot of in the restaurant, especially in our curry sauces. Um, make, it, make a little paste with that, fry off the rice and go through a very similar process. For me, that would be probably the, the veggio version of this that would tick the box. All right, so we've got the pan nice and hot. Matt, Nick Harcourt on Facebook wants to know if you could use Morton Bay bug instead of a spanner crab. Absolutely, absolutely. What, what I would do with the bug though, I would uh, cut it up into smaller pieces. Okay, so the crab is beautiful and, and flaky and it kind of feathers out once you put it into the pan and fry it off. I'd be wanting to do the same with the bugs, get a really nice fine dice on it, put it in at the same point that I put the crab in um, and, and everything else with the dish stays the same. Definitely use the chicken fat. All right. Okay, so we've got a probably three to two, three tablespoons of the chicken fat in there. I'm gonna go with a couple of beautiful eggs. Just gonna crack them in and I'll scramble them around. All right. Look at the yolk. Oh, Estelle, you're a star. The yolks on them are absolutely stunning. Okay, so I'm basically gonna make a, a double batch of this. 
um, which I think is, you know, it's a fair portion if you're cooking at home. Uh, and the best thing about a fried rice, it doesn't have to be the, the uh, you know, the, the superstar of the dinner. It can be a beautiful little side dish that you can have if you're making a little Chinese banquet at home. Um, have this with some, you know, a side of some master soft raised pork belly, uh, some steamed greens, uh, just in done with a little bit of oyster sauce and some fried garlic chips over the top. Absolutely delicious. All right, so we've got the, got the egg just scrambling in there. Just gonna move that around a touch more. Just break it up a little bit more. But as you go through the process of frying it off, you get the rice in there, that's also gonna assist in, in just breaking it all up and getting a nice even, uh, even spread of the egg throughout the rice dish. Now, going with some spring onions. And I've got some really finely sliced, beautiful, fresh ginger um, that we actually get from uh, Timbiwa, uh, a local guy in Timbiwa, he gives us our, our fresh ginger and turmeric, which is absolutely stunning. Okay, so we're just gonna move that through. I'm probably just going with just a touch more of our chicken butt there. Because it's a double batch, you can be generous with it, okay? Matt, people wanna know where you can get chicken fat from. Is that something you can buy in the local supermarket? Chicken fat, okay. This is where you need to have those amazing relationships with your butchers. Go to your butcher, ask them for if they've got any chicken skin. So when they're breaking down chickens, uh, for some reason, I don't know why people want to have skinless chicken breasts if they're looking to have a healthier alternative, um, they don't want that excess fat. You can buy the, uh, buy the chicken skin. And then what we do is we put it in the oven at a low temperature uh, and just, just render it down. Okay, so put it, put it in a baking tray, put a lid on it, and just sit it in the oven at about 100 degrees and it will just render and melt out. Basically, it comes out like uh, like ghee, like like a little like clarified butter, um, and that's that's how we do it here at the restaurant. You can also just put it in a, in a little pot, little saucepan on a low heat, uh, and just let it tick along. What you'll see is you'll see the size of the the actual chicken skin will shrink, and you, it just starts to release that lovely fat. You know, it's, it's always nice to have something different like that in the fridge. Um, if you've got a little bit of time at the moment, go to the butcher, trial it. Um, and I'm not saying label chicken fat over everything, but for us, in particular with this dish, we just felt it to be a really beautiful fit. All right, so eggs in, spring onions. I'm gonna go with a very generous amount of the crab. So you can see there, we've got these little red highlights and flecks through the, uh, through the crab meat. That is from the claw. Uh, and it's a very sought after part of the crab. I've actually been there in the factory watching them uh, pick it and process it. And it's the most amazing thing. So you've got this full production line, everyone in there, they, they've developed the technology to be able to spin the meat out of the crab. Um, and then what they do is they go through and they make sure that every single uh, package of the spanner crab meat goes out into the, into the world, has got a nice even amount of the core meat, which I think is just one of those things that it just suggests and it just proves how passionate these guys are about what they do um, and that they really believe in the product and they want everyone to experience it on the same level. Uh, you know, when you see little things like that of people going above and beyond to, to make sure that everyone's getting the same experience, everyone's getting the same quality and it's all done by hand, is just, at this day and age, is an absolute tribute to what these guys do down there. So if you're ever heading out to your uh, your seafood manga, if you're in Kalula Bar, head in, see the guys, Fraser Ross Panacraft, it is an incredible product and something. We move a lot off here at the restaurant and we're, we're incredibly proud too. Okay, so we've got the crab meat in there. It's just starting to cook, just starting to become nice and translucent. So we've got a couple of cups here of our nice cooked and dried off rice. I, I like to keep an eye on the uh, on the ratio of the, the cooked rice to the ingredients. I like to have a nice even spread. Um, so you you know you don't feel like you're just eating a bowl of rice. There's there's a lot of goodness in there. You get that amazing flavour from from the crab. Obviously the chicken fat. And I think a flavour combination like this does does a lot of just, justice uh, to something so beautiful and delicate like the like the Spanish crab meat. You don't want to you don't want to overrule it and override it with some massive flavours. Um, everything here that we've got with a little bit of basic seasoning, it's all a really fine, delicate balance, which is again to me, which is why it's such, it's such a complete dish in my opinion. Could you use a different type of rice in it, Matt, or is the best maybe of white rice? Yeah, to, to go with some, some jasmine rice is obviously the, 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 the standard. Um, anything that's gonna give you that nice, as you can see here, it just rolls through the pan. It, it's gonna give you that nice tumbling motion. Uh, I, I've never tried it with a brown rice or anything like that. 
I would go, you can buy long grain jasmine, even basmati would definitely do the trick. So I think sure. that was a question from Jake on Facebook. Jake, that would, that would be my go, my man. Uh, I'd be going with basmati or long grain if you want to switch it up. If you want to, you know what, do me a favor, have a shot of brown rice. I have no idea how it's going to go. Um, who knows? You might be on the side. Alright, so you can just see that all the, now that, that colour from the claw meat's really starting to pop through now that it's been cooked. Um, it's, it's almost getting to that stage. Alright, so what I'm going to do, you just start to season it up a little bit. It's got some sea salt. And I feel like I'm going to get one of those questions which is like, why, why don't you use any soy? Why don't you use any soy or fish sauce or anything like that? We actually, when we're cooking our rice here, we, so we steam the jasmine, the jasmine rice. We put things like soy sugar, white pepper, um, and fish stock. That's how we cook off the rice. So we've, we've already built that flavor. <coughs> a little bit of white pepper. We've already built that flavor into the rice itself. Um, and for us, because it's such a fine line in the kitchen, having to, to, to get these dishes out with consistency, um, the less seasoning that we have to do in there, uh, the better. It makes it faster and efficient um, and way more consistent. Because I feel like I was going to stick. Yeah, this question fired at me because I've had it before. All right, that's looking really good. Okay, so uh, the last couple of things that we throw in there. So you saw me go with the, the sea salt, the cut sugar, little sprinkle of white pepper. I like a good dose of the white pepper. Uh, I think it, it goes beautifully with the, with the crab. You get that nice, nice warmth from the white pepper, uh, the ginger, and then we've got some coriander stem. So we've got that midsection. Now I've just cut that. It's almost like chives. Okay, so I'm just going to sprinkle that through. Uh, some green spring onions from the top part. All right, I'm just going to give it a quick taste, see how it's traveling. That's looking good to me. That crab is not unbelievable. That's it, done. Don't touch it. We've got well, every, everything that's in there, you can taste it at some point or another. The texture of the crab meat is absolutely stunning. Uh, the little warmth of the ginger, the white pepper, the slight sweetness, the coriander stem. Uh, it's all just coming together. Laced with a good dose of chicken fat. All right, so I'm just gonna put that in there. That's, that's definitely enough for two people. So that was probably two eggs, probably 150 grams of the beautiful crab meat. And then just to finish it off, some fresh coriander, just the top, just been washed off. And some more of the green spring onions. There we go. That is the some of you guys Spanish crab fried rice. Um, it, it's, it's probably one of those dishes that we're never gonna take off the menu for, for very good reason. Uh, simple, delicious, quick, using phenomenal local produce that we're, that we're so fortunate to, to have access to, whether it's coming from the, from the, the land, the sea. Um, Queensland's really got it all going on and we're so blessed for that. And that's why I see why so many people are uh, making that move from the South and coming up here and setting up restaurants and, and working with the, the produce we have. Um, it, it's, it's different, it's intriguing, it's abundant. Um, and yeah, we're very blessed and that's why we set up shop here. Um, so there we go, guys. There's a, a very quick little run through of a dish that, like I said, it, it's approachable, uh, it's delicious, it's, it's good home cooking and comfort food. Uh, coming into the, the cooler months, something like that is, is absolutely something I'd like to see on a few more tables around this country, uh, especially when you get to champion the stuff that I've got here on the table. So there we are. So Matt, we've got a few questions on Facebook here yes. for you. So Elizabeth Walsh wants to know, can you do the recipe without chili? I didn't put any chili in that one. Well, so, you know. so there's no there's no chili in that. Um, Can you add chili? To, to be to be totally honest, it's a, it's a really good point because we we work with a lot of chili here, and but we also need to be mindful of people that have uh, chili allergies. Um, they have a low tolerance for chili. Uh, so dishes like this come about and they're, they're conceived through, I guess, running into those scenarios. Of not everyone is is obsessed with chili like us. Me, I, I would probably on the side of that have a little. Little nampla, so a little uh, yeah, fish sauce um, and some bird's eye chilies, just to give me that extra bump, that extra saltiness, and that that spicy hit. Um, so yeah, this is this is one of the few dishes on the menu that doesn't require chili. Um, if you want to add it, go for your life. I would add it at the point. Uh, some some really finely sliced uh, 
Green chilies would be beautiful, um, some little bird's eyes. Add that in when you add in the, the spring onions, the ginger and the garlic at the start. Get that in there, fry it off, really start to release the, the perfume and the, the heat from those guys. And I think when you're going up against other ingredients that are quite quite luscious um, and, and uh, you know, you've got the, the fattiness of the, the crab meat and the chicken fat and that, the, 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 the cloudy eggs, um, chili would be delicious in there. Uh, Laura wants to know which Queensland produce do you most love to cook with? Oh. That's a hard one. <laughs> Who's that, Laura? Yeah. Jeez. Which Queensland produce do I love to cook with the most? It's like she's asking you to pick just one. Pick one. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Um, for me, can I, can I give her a broad, I'm going to say our seafood. Oh, I have to say our seafood because of the proximity to the ocean that we have. Um, we have some of the greatest seafood in the world, definitely in the country. Um, things like the, the spanner crab, the Malula bar king prawns, the Harvey Bay scallops, the, um, the coral trout, which is just absolutely phenomenal and second to none when it comes to fish. That would have to be my answer. Queensland seafood, pretty hard to beat. Rachel wants to know if you have a favourite brunch spot on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, the Velo Project in Malolaba. Oh, that was an easy one. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with what these guys do down there. No fuss. Um, every time you go down there, for me, it's like the simple things. They're like toast cooked properly, like proper toasted. Um, delicious, fresh ingredients, beautifully poached eggs, um, lovely local avocados. Um, for me, that that's that's a winner every time. I've never really had a, a disappointment there. I love what those guys do. Kerry Heaney wants to know, um, she can't eat spanner, crab, what yep. else could she use? Uh, is it is it a crustacean allergy or just can't have spanner crab in particular? Just can't have spanner crab. Can't have spanner crab. Um, prawn meat is always a good option, like uh, the, the gentleman that asked before, can you use more made bug meat for sure? Um, even some, I mean, if you wanted to just steer away from seafood, some beautifully uh, perfectly poached chicken that was just you know sliced up and tossed through. Uh, chicken tenderloins really finely diced up would be lovely. Um, of course, using the chicken fat, really nice combination. Um, so yeah, I mean you can keep it as simple as you want. You can go, you can go with with bacon and peas. Um, it's it's entirely up to you. Yeah, it doesn't have to be spanner crab. But for me, oh, I've tried many, many many variations of this dish. Believe me, uh, and this is yeah. So Neha says like chicken or other vegetables would be fine too. Absolutely, go for your life. So I guess that's a beautiful thing about fried rice dishes in general. It's, it's, it's become quite common for households to have a bit of a rummage around the crisp drawer, have a look at what's in the freezer, whether it's frozen corn or peas, um, bacon, things like that. They're pretty stock standard. And I think that's been the amazing thing with people cooking at home now uh, so much. They're, they're discovering what they've already got uh, without having to go out there and, and push too hard to find the ingredients. So yeah, fried rice dishes for me, it's a real blank canvas of the dish. Um, Elizabeth wants to know if some young guys' curry sauces will come back to Brisbane. <laughs> Elisa? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, some young guys' curry sauces will be coming back to Brisbane this Saturday with the guys from Soulfish Seafoods again. Um, apologies that they sold out last week, didn't preempt it, but they will be back on Saturday and hopefully a weekly thing from here on. So we'd also like to know um, if you can tell us a bit more about yourself and some background on how you developed such a passion for food. How did you get into food? How did I get into food? Mm -hmm. ah, um, I guess for me growing up, Food was always an enormous part of, of all family gatherings. My my grandmother and great grandmother they obviously came from an, from an era that was incredibly resourceful and creative, using what they had. And I think that's just something that's always travelled through. Um, you know, it all starts with basic things like scones and, and beautifully well seasoned roasts and, and homemade gravies and and things like that. You know, baking um, and then moving forward, I guess moving into the hospitality industry. Uh, a lot of my best mates were always chefs. I seem to just get along with them. Um, and, and just having that thirst for, for, for wanting to be better, wanting to know more about food, wanting to travel, wanting to taste. Um, it's, it was all of those things that just kept striking the chord of like, okay, I think food is, is for me, that's, that's where I'm gonna be. Uh, 
We got a cracker of a question here from Julia. She wants to know, oh, oh. you've had the amazing opportunity to travel around Queensland. What would be your favorite foodie experiences you've had to date in Queensland? Favorite foodie experiences? Uh, for me, uh, one standout would have to be when we were uh, shooting the, the digital series and basically picking a whole bunch of case studies to move around the state, heading out to a uh, Birdsville to, to meet the Brook family to see what they're doing out there on their cattle station uh, over the organic was just, for me, mind blowing and, and something that's definitely changed me forever. Uh, I think that's why we've gone down the line of uh, getting our own little farm started. We've got some acreage uh, up in the Sunshine Coast hinterland now that we want to start to raise cattle on. And I think for me, that was something that made me realize uh, it's, it's become almost a rite of passage to dig a little bit deeper, become a little bit more involved, and I guess become somewhat of a primary producer down the line. Uh, and I think that was a really pivotal moment was heading out and meeting those guys and seeing what they do. Um, yeah, it's definitely changed me. So what was the reason behind your move to Queensland? Why did you just decide to make it your home? Because you're not originally from Queensland, are you? I'm not originally from Queensland. I'm originally a Sydney sider. Uh, Queensland and Noosa in particular was always our, our annual, our Christmas holiday destination. We used to pack a car, Boxing Day would take off and drive from Sydney up here, stay with uh, our family friends out at a property in Mount Rover. And we'd spend five or six weeks camping on their, on their paddocks and it was just amazing. Uh, and that's probably what urged mum and dad to want to move up here. And then about 12 months after mum and dad did I followed suit, worked at Bistro C, uh, which is a famous, it's like an institution in Noosa, right on Main Beach in Hastings Street. Um, and then I went traveling, had the decision, city, Noosa, everyone I tell that story to finishes my sentence. He goes, not a hard, uh, <laughs> not a hard pick. And that's why I've ended up in Noosa because it's just the, the lifestyle for me, um, the people, the place, obviously it's, it's a stunning environment. Um, but it, yeah, it's, I don't know, there was just a totally different feel to it. I think, that, I think Queensland's got that very specific feel to it. And I think whenever someone crosses the border, they immediately change gears. Um, I think they go from their fast paced lifestyles to really just kicking it back into Queensland time. And, and that's why we've become one of the most sought after destinations, not just domestically, but internationally. And that's why they're So I think Julia on Facebook is trying to plan her Queensland foodie holiday so yes. we can travel again. Because Julia's coming with another question. She said, if you could create a Queensland foodie bucket list for future travellers, what would your top five experiences be for each visitor? Top five. Top five foodie experiences in Queensland. Go. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Sunshine Coast hinterland, absolutely tick that off. Uh, the place is up there. The produce is outstanding. Um, some beautiful little uh, B and Bs and homestays, farm stays. Uh, Brisbane. I think if you if you're searching for some some good restaurant action, there's a lot of amazing emerging restaurants popping up in Brisbane. Um, the Howard Smith Walls Precinct is unbelievable. So restaurants, bars, if that's what you're doing, you know, for your food experiences, tick that off. Um, Gold Coast hinterland, of course, um, gorgeous beach. You've got that nice. Uh, interplay between the, the beaches and the hinterland there as well. But again, the restaurants are, are outstanding. Um, north. Tropical North. I think when we went up there, we went up to uh, Cairns, Palm Cove, um, just amazing. And then the produce up there as well. So you've got, you've got the whole rainforest that comes into play, um, as well as things like your, your, your coral trout, which is just abundant up there. Um, and then and, and you'd have to go on an island. I think you'd have, you'd have to go on an island of some sort. I think there's somewhat of 2,000 of them um, dotted along the, the east coast of, of Queensland. So that would, that would have to, when we went out to Heron Island, just traveling out there, you can get there by ferry, you can get there by chopper, um, and coming in over and seeing the, the coral reef and everything that was happening underneath, the, the, the life that was just booming out of there. Uh, yeah, that that had happened. Was that five? Yeah, that was five. Yeah, that that had been tick tick. Yeah, very good. Um, so people would like to know where you get your inspiration from for your cooking. Uh, I think in, inspiration comes from anywhere really. I mean, you can you can be inspired by people. Uh, you can be inspired by the chefs. You can be inspired by the produce by talking to the producers. Uh, that really sort of stirs up a lot of 
uh, a lot of uh, emotion and connection to the food and to figure out what you want to do with it. Um, people, places, times, memories, all of those things come into play. And you just, you know, if it's one thing I've learned, you can't force it. You, you can't force the creativity. It just kind of stumbles across you like a lightning bolt. You go, mm, maybe, maybe that'll work. Um, you reach out, you get the produce, and you see if you can transition the magic through the fingers from the brain. So a final question that I think everyone would probably like to know, what are the five essentials you always have in your fridge? Ch chili, so <laughs> chili sauce of some kind, uh, probably sriracha. Um, in the fridge, feta cheese, chili sauce, <laughs> it's a weird mix. Feta cheese, chili sauce, uh, good butter, some really nice butter. Uh, Chocolate and fresh herbs. And do you think Queensland's food and produce should be a reason to travel to Queensland? Absolutely, absolutely, With, without question. Uh, the the restaurant scene up here, and, and, and you know, you, you food becomes universal. Uh, so we've got the, the chefs from here that are traveling around, um, different trends get set. And then I think we've really found a, a beautiful identity with working with what we've got, because I think we've also noticed that the, the other states, um, not gonna name any names, Melbourne, Sydney, um, they have stumbled across what we've got up here, the bounty of Queensland produce, the quality of it, the uniqueness of it. Um, so you've got a lot of these chefs that are emerging, they're, they're starting their own restaurants, they're creating their own styles, based around uh, the food that we've been blessed with. Uh, if that doesn't make a, a food food culture of a place unique, and I don't know what will. Um, people just want to know if we can get a quick, if you can hold up the dish just quickly in front of you so we can have a look. I'm just going to put some fresh curry in. <laughs> it's been sitting there for 20 minutes in question time. All right, so a little bit of that over top, a little bit more of that. There we go. Um, shall I say that? That's got two maybe it's covered all. <laughs> if I'm hungry. <coughs> we good? Come? All right. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. Not a hard task to have a chat about Queensland produce. I hope to see you again soon.